Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock Metal Podcast. I'm your host, John Harris, and today on Rock Metal Podcast, we have N Versus, and they have a new album called Cessation, which was released on September 24th via Octane Records. Right now, I'm being joined by Andy and Daniel to share some more information about this release and what the boys have got going on. So, Andy, Daniel, welcome to the show. Thanks, Great John. Thing. Thanks for having us. Yeah, Great to be here. Yeah. 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 Great to have you boys on. <laughs> Mish sent me the stuff, and she was like, "Do you do you like this band?" And I said, "Yes." And she said, "Do you want them on the show?" And I said, "Yes." And then you guys said yes. We both said yes, and this is what happens when several it, people say yes. This is as consensual as it gets. Yeah, I think. yeah. yeah, I know. It's a yes fest. It, it is okay. a yes fest. Yes, yes. fest twenty one. <laughs> Passcode yes fest twenty one. Perfect. Um, <laughs> What is this record about? What did you guys set out to do with this album? And I, I think one of my other questions, kind of in tandem to that, is because of the situation that's going on, not a lot of bands are committing to a full album. They're doing single releases, EPs. So my first question is, what is this record about? And then in tandem to that is, why a full album at this time? Do you want to know what what the theme of the record is or what, like, just in general, like, uh, as a whole, both. So, like, if there's okay. a, if there's a, like a lyrical concept or uh, a musical concept, or if you guys set out to do something musically or lyrically, or if it was just an entirely an accident, or somebody said, "I got these ten songs on my hard drive," and you went, "That's it." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, we started writing this album with our previous band, so we. We were all in a, uh, another band called Anno Domini, and this is this band is pretty much just the ending of that band and us starting something new. Um, so we had songs written for a new album. Um, we had them recorded. You know, we went through and did all that, and we decided, you know, we should start fresh because what we've done here is completely different from the material that we had before. Um, I joined that band like five or six years ago, but. Dan has actually been in the band since early days, so he can tell you how different the sound was from when they started. Yeah. Uh, yeah, look, uh, I joined Anno in 2005. Like, we, we were all still in high school together. Um, and look, we did, we did two full-length albums, and um, I think it just got to a point where Anno kind of just ran its course. Um, our lead guitarist is probably the better person to ask about this, but um, basically, it was just um, Anno had kind of been done. We would had members join the band and leave the band, and it was kind of where we were in that that snapshot in time. And it was just kind of getting to the point where it's kind of like the sound had evolved and evolved and evolved, and it was um, basically time to rebrand sounds like a, a real marketing term. I don't really like the term rebrand, but it was sort of like we'd come so far and we kind of wanted to leave that in the past and sort of do something sort of new with the new material. And um, that's kind of where the ball got rolling on. As I said, it's the same members. We're all we're, like, we haven't, we haven't sort of kicked anybody out, but um, kind of, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I've, I've been waiting for that call my whole life, but um, I can tell. Like, yeah, you know, <laughs> I play the bass. Man. You look a little so, anxious. Uh, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I'm just waiting for Danny to call me. Um, <laughs> we had like uh, Danny's one of those kind of guys that just sits there and just writes material. So we had this sort of stockpile of this sort of new sort of direction that we were kind of going in, and um, kind of thought well, now's the time, we'll just rebrand, or not rebrand, but like start something new, start something fresh, a little bit new direction. And that's kind of where we we went. I think we recorded the album kind of not knowing where we were kind of going. We, were, we, we knew the direction musically that we were going, but whether what, what, ban- what banner that was going to be under um, was still kind of not really sure of at the time. Mm-hmm. We kind of recorded it. And then decided to change the um, the name and the whole um, the culture of what we were going to release it under. Yeah. 
so we've actually been sitting on this album for oh geez andy when did we finish it like two years ago i think at least like yeah yeah at least like we've yeah, been a while now sitting on it for a while and we were kind of geared to release it right when um covid kind of took down the planet mm-hmm. so i think that kind of leads into your next sort of bit about like you know everyone's non-committal on doing an album right now we had this done before so i remember i met our producer in finland in february right when in february 2020 when it when the world was kind of starting to kind of come to grips with what was going on so that's kind of a um how long we've been sitting on this for a bit so it's not so much that we chose to do the album during a pandemic. It was sort of done beforehand, and now we're 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 just happy to sort of start getting it out there because we've been staring at it for way too long. <laughs> staring at like, it with anxiety oh, every time. Oh, man, every time the it's, phone goes off, you're like there's the call, you're shaking. Yeah, it's even, it's <laughs> alive. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. For sure. Cool. Um, yeah, sweet. Okay, so uh, starting a new band, we won't we won't refer to it in the marketing terms of rebranding because music is not a business. Um, and then, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that moniker, we'll call it a new moniker. You're getting a new moniker. You like the you like the word yeah, moniker? But yeah, yeah, kind of the next the next like the natural kind of next step, I guess, that all bands kind of go through. I guess my question is if from what it sounds like anyway, was changing the name really did a lot. Cause if it's the same members, same sort of musical trajectory, I guess the question is what was it about the previous outfit that I guess had tapped out? If really the only thing from what it seems like I heard changed was the moniker. And you uh, uh, I'll take this one for a bit. Um, as I said, kind of, I, I kind of touched on it earlier. We were kind of a high school band, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it was, <clears throat> I think I joined when I was 16. I remember doing our first gig uh, and me and Amir, the drummer, we were underage and we played in a pub and we were under strict orders that we would sit in the corner of the pub <laughs> and not go anywhere to the bar. And um, I think... And one of our original guitarists as well, um, you know, they kind of had this roadmap and this vision of what the band was going to be. And I think as just life kind of takes its toll on on things, people go, people leave, people no longer kind of fit the vision that was going forward with the band. Um, Things just change, Mm -hmm. you know, and it kind of got to the point, um, I think, Danny, our, our main songwriter, he kind of just sort of had this sort of moment in his life where he's kind of like, well, what I'm writing now and the material I'm writing now isn't um, isn't kind of parallel to what I was when I started the band, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I mean, I hope I'm quoting him right, but um, <clears throat> he's kind of like, well, what I'm writing now is not sort of in the same um, tunnel that I was in when I was writing the other stuff. So it's kind of not the same thing. And I think it was just a fresh break, you know, kind of putting that part, putting that part to bed and going, well, let's do this new thing and this new vision and let's kind of give it new life. Mm-hmm. You know, even though it's the same people as, as the last Anno lineup was, it's the same, same lineup now. Um, it's just about kind of breathing something new and kind of, and also just for ourselves, you know, like keeping it interesting, keeping it fresh. Um, I don't know, Andy, if you want to add anything to that, but um, if you squeeze yeah. it, it's fresh. I, I think, <laughs> I think yeah. another Lemons. point of um, why we wanted to change it is because that, that band had been in the local scene for so long that, you know, like a, we felt like, you know, a band, that's been there for for that long should people will get like a certain expectation of what that band should sound like. And, um, you know, they associate certain things with it. So we thought 
that by changing, you know, just rebranding for Dan, um, <laughs> rebranded yeah. that it just gives a new perspective from it, like from the audience onto, you know, what we were doing. So just kind of like a big reset sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Bringing clarity to the storm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I can see what you did there. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Exactly, baby. This is kind of a question I, I sometimes have because it's an interesting uh, mental construct, especially when there are two different monikers with arguably the same members and they produce two different tracks and like um, At the Gates and Haunted, for example, almost identical bands, different monikers. Yeah, yeah. They've even had the same producer recording in the same studio. How in the world do you produce something different than if it's the same guys? But it, it's an interesting mental construct. So I just kind of like, you know, asking that question of like, how in the world did you guys produce something different if it's basically the same band? I just find it uh, crazy, almost. Yeah. Yeah, and look, um, it, it was sort of something that I think each sort of member of the band took a while. Well, I mean, I'll end that going at myself. Like some of us took a bit longer to kind of um, <clears throat> come on board with the idea. But um, I think Andy kind of said it, said it right. You kind of get this weird, yeah, but, you know, people that have followed us, like, you know, like with Anno, like you think, you know, we've we got fans that have got the, you know, the name tattooed on them and stuff. So you kind of have this weird kind of um, mantle of expectation on you, even though, like, as I said, like, we're not, we're not, like, huge or anything like that. Um, but I, I think, as I said, like, kind of, like, for ourselves, I think it was just, like, just a fresh break. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So if you got people tattooed on you, you're kind of immortal. <laughs> we are for those people. That's yeah. for damn sure. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Well, we'll have to become the end at some point. There is forgiveness in death, though. Oh my God! This is <laughs> you, should, you should be our marketing guy. <laughs> hey, 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 seriously, okay. can we can we hide? Probably should. Now, something you mentioned there was a producer in Finland. That's a long way to go for a producer. So, tell us about that. Andy. Okay. Um, well. We found out about this guy through Dan. So Dan is uh, friends with um, some of the guys in War Sabita. They're a um, Finnish kind of modern death thrash metal band. Um, oh, awesome. And I don't know, how did, how did you find out about So I'm, I'm by, virtue, by virtue of being a pest, essentially, I struck up a friendship with... Um, <laughs> I'm gonna. He's gonna hate me for butchering his name, but Mika Yune Yuntala. I think. I think that's how I say his name. He's good, the bass for uh, Morsebita. They hail from a uh, Oulu in northern Finland. Um, yeah. I'm a huge fan of their band. And when they released, uh, they le- uh, what was there? Uh, they released. I think it was. It wasn't Degeneration. It was um, Into the Pitch Black. That album they released, and um. I'm a huge fan. I think Andy, I could say, is pretty much a pretty pretty big fan too. And I just love the mix. You know, yeah. like, I remember here. It sounded huge. Absolutely. Oh, dude. Like, by any, by any moment, like, you, you, you're listening to it, I thought, this mix is awesome. Like, if you really kind of think, I want to I really kind of pick out what the bass is doing or what the guitar is doing or what the drums are doing, you can hear it. And I just asked him, <clears throat> I asked you on there i'm like dude who who just by just curious who who mixed it and he kind of pointed us in the direction of um stefan from um is it how do you say what's his name illusia illusia productions illusia productions and uh, we just reached out to him and um kind of got the ball rolling initially initially with the album we were just going to get him to mix it and he kind of um he heard the album (laughs) <laughs> you know the album mysteriously I had to re-record my bass what do you know and, um, you're kidding he, yeah weird yeah I know right um, I'm surprised I'm here he um, <laughs> <laughs> he um, produced a song he just said look I'm just gonna put his um, sort of fingerprint on a track and 
tell me what you think. And I, I, Andy, I can't remember. I, I forget which track he kind of um, sent back to us with his kind of flair on it. And I remember just thinking like, oh, man, like, oh, you know, you, you have this moments where you're like, oh, fuck, you know, this is about to cost us a lot more money, but holy crap, we can't let this go, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, a bold moment, I think, for any band to step across the line into professionalism where you recognize that the records you've been hearing growing up were done in the studio by professionals. And, yeah. you know, there's kind of a moment where you go from, no, no, we could do it all ourselves to there are professionals out there who can take us to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's why these, these guys had a job. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, uh, you know, they, they can, they get good results. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think people, um, it's easy in the modern era with things, you know, like, like as, as far as recording programs and drum machines and all that kind of crap is going to come. It's easy to go like, well, you know, you don't really need a studio anymore. You can just reamp everything and program drums and it'll be, you know, great. But I think people like Stefan kind of have that kind of reminder where you're like, well, you know, this dude, you just sort of see his work and how good he can mix and how the the difference having, especially someone who who doesn't hasn't been kind of bludgeoned to death in the recording project process of of recording the songs twenty thousand times to kind of breathe have a fresh eye and a fresh ear and they can kind of add their own flair to it with, with things that you wouldn't have even considered. Yeah, and. It, you hear it back and you're like, oh man, that's like blowing my mind. This this track that I thought was boring is now kind of like, you know, like, <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, what is that, a, a violin? You know, like, what the hell? Mm. Um, so that was really, really cool. You know, it was really, really cool to get him on board and have him kind of part of it. And he kind of took it from what we had as this like, yeah, it's good. It's, we thought it was great. But then he kind of like kicked it up to like sixth gear with, yeah. this is amazing, you know. Mm-hmm. Ain't no local band no more. Well, hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully not. That's true. Well, you guys, well, well, you guys got a record deal and uh, a PR agency and a relationship with a guy in Finland who lives out in the woods who knows how to twist EQ knobs. It's good stuff. He's German too. He's German. He's yeah. Living, yeah. Oh my. Yeah, oh, I know. Tongue. He's a yeah. He's a head guest. He's Scheiße. <laughs> <laughs> Scheiße schön, wunderschön. Oh. Sehr gut. Okay. So we chatted about starting a new band, choosing a producer. Uh, loosely, we chatted about the album a bit. We know we re recorded the bass. Bass is so important, especially in this kind of music. <laughs> Getting those pro steels on there, maybe. A new battery, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll pit it on the battery for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man getting some clarity cool uh is there anything that that we missed that you guys <clears throat> wanted to chat about lyrically i'll leave that up to andy he he really kind of piloted in that direction so I'll, i think okay man, if you want to touch on that that'd be great well lyrically it's there, there are a lot of things on there i guess it's not really about one thing um this is the second album that I've actually written lyrics for. So I didn't start off my musical journey as a vocalist. I, I actually play guitar. Guitar was my first instrument. And, you know, guitar is what I've just always focused on up until, you know, like six or seven years ago. I just wanted to try something different, which is when, coincidentally, when I was invited to join these guys in the band. Um, so... Yeah, I don't have a long history of, of writing lyrics. Um, so I, I started off with just, you know, just kind of random stuff, like, you know, th things that are far away from myself, like um, ancient history, aliens, conspiracies, you know, like the... <laughs> Those things are like, real, you know, Andy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't say That's they weren't real. <laughs> I'm not saying they're not real. Um yeah, I used to like writing about that kind of stuff. But for this album in particular, I, I wanted to try something a little bit different. So there are a few songs that deal with that kind of stuff, but it, I 
would say it's a little bit more personal, more to do with um, emotions and, and, you know, just the feelings and kind of shortcomings of, of being human. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, I, don't, um, I don't know what shortcomings you're talking about, Andy. I'm, I'm great, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a marketing genius. That's for sure. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Why I'm wearing a shirt that says I'm a legend. <laughs> and also the man and the myth. That's right. The man, the myth, the legend, baby. Is that what the shirt Holy says? Trinity. I think so. Yep. Groovy. Sweet. Okay. So I believe we chatted about everything under the sun, which is fantastic and um, awesome. And if there's anything else, that concludes my question. So, boys, thank you so much for coming on to the show today. Thank, thank you for having me. <clears throat> no, we really appreciate the opportunity, man. Uh, this is really cool. Thank you. Yeah, this is our first really uh, kind of collaborative video p podcast sort of thing. Yeah, this is... Uh, We've this just is been really doing like text interviews and one person at a time. Like, this is the first time we've had a couple of people on, so... Yeah, yeah cool. no, no, thank you very much, man. We appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate it. You're welcome.